here. You guys are probably wondering why I just have a game log up here. Okay. The game log, this is Kyle Stowers game log in the big leagues last year, courtesy of ESPN. Okay. So the first thing I want to people to understand is when you make a team, it's exciting. But then also when you make a team and you don't get to play right off the bat, you sometimes get out of rhythm. First game Sunday against Boston. Okay. They opened up, I believe on the Thursday prior. So Kyle Stowers first at bat and it was one at bat and it was against Caleb Bort. You're going to see in the video. You, he was out of sync. And there, that's going to be a theme here why I think Kyle Stier Sowers had so much struggle is he got out of sync from not playing consistently. He played the second, the third, didn't play again until the eighth, then obviously was not with the team. And then when he finally did start to play some more games in May, personally, I think he got such in a bad place mentally as a hitter. And when you get into the struggles, he only had 31 at-bats in the big leagues last year. That sample size is not very big. To some, that might seem like a lot. But for a, a, a season where hitters can go for 600 at-bats in a year or more, 31 at-bats, 30 at-bats really is nothing, okay? So let's keep moving on with this so people can understand a little bit more about Kyle, uh, Kyle Stowers' year last year. This is his first at-bat of the season. You're facing Ort. And by the way, shadow ball, by the way, if you look at this right now, there's the sun. You're feeling good. Every hitter hates the shadows. And if they say they like it, they're lying because you're trying to pick up the ball going through the sun to a darker place. That is so damn hard to see. By the way, that's your first at bat of the season. By the way, that's in the ninth inning. 0-2 count. Kyle's going to get a fastball that he's probably not going to pick up too well. And he's going to swing and miss. Here it is. So there's that. This is the other example, though. You're going to see a string. This is when things aren't going well for you, okay? So Kyle Stowers, he strikes out. Kyle had a run of you just need one moment to kind of change your, your season around or to get you out of a slump. And when things aren't going well, you either miss the ball or you foul away the pitches that you usually drive. And here's a sequence where Kyle's going to foul a ball off right here where he's feeling good. He knows he can drive this baseball, and then he's just going to miss it and it's going to be a theme, okay? So there's one. All right, tough pitch. Here's another one. All right, middle middle away, that's a pitch he loves to drive. And, yes, he came off the baseball a little bit, but when you're not feeling good and you're missing pitches you can hit, that only frustrates you more, okay? You keep going on. You get the idea right there. Ball, ball is fouled away. Another example right here, fastball middle in, fouled it off. Timing's off. And everything's about timing. I'm going to come over here for a second. How are we doing? So as a hitter, imagine you're trying to then get your timing down in general. So when you're watching the pitcher, usually when you're playing every day, you have the rhythm, you have how your body moves or rocks, you have that cadence down. When you aren't playing every single day, you get a little bit more tight, maybe you're not as relaxed, and then so your timing and your swing, nothing is together. So you can sometimes be a little bit too jumpy, you can be a little bit too late in your load, whatever it may be, it's going to throw you off. And those are pitches that Kyle can drive that he's just missing. Okay. Keep going on here. This Kyle's going to end up grounding this ball out here and it's going to be a slider coming in here. So when Kyle was not fouling the pitches off or striking out, he was then rolling the baseball over because his timing and first move, I'll come back over here again. His timing and first move was not being able to wait long enough back. So all he'd do is rolled over into the ground. And everyone that's played baseball, you've rolled the ball over. And if you haven't, you're lying to yourself. Don't lie to yourself, okay? So for him, the tendency, timing's off, shoulder comes off the baseball. It's gonna be a ground out here to the first baseman, okay? There it is. Here's another example. 1-0 count, hitters count here, right? So Kyle wants to be aggressive. He's gonna get like a cutter right over the middle of the plate. And when your timing's that much off, he's not gonna put a swing that he wants on. It's gonna be a lightly hit ground ball back to the pitcher. Okay. I mean, that's a cutting fastball. I understand that, but that's a pitch that Kyle on a 1-0 count probably could have had a better swing. Now here's an 0-2 count. Mitch Keller just had that big deal, by the way, happy for Mitch. Fastball is going to rise. Kyle again, not going to be able to catch up with it. And it's in three pitches, right? So the at-bats maybe aren't as competitive as he wants. That happens too, by the way, but when things aren't going right, more of this type of you know, you're in, you find yourself in more of these situations. Okay. So that's that. And then this last one, he had a ground out to the uh, second baseman, same thing, rolling over the baseball. All right. So I want people to understand this because that was 2023. And this is why I'm telling people not to sleep on Kyle Stowers 
because of these next graphs I'm going to show you. And then to show you what you've been seeing in spring training is not a fluke at all. Okay. So this is 2022. And I did, it, there were so many games here. I couldn't even put it all on the screen here. Again, thank you to ESPN for the game logs. You can find them everywhere, but this is where I got mine from. Check the dates. 21, 23, 25, 26, 3, 5, 7. He played two games in the doubleheader. 9, 13. The most games he had off at one point, I'm seeing, was four. So he's in rhythm. It's later in the season, too. And if you're looking at this, 50 at-bats, 280 average, three jacks. So Kyle was starting to get in rhythm. And he's a guy, when he's feeling good, he can drive the ball to any part of the, the park. He can drive it over to – he can hit a pitch. I know i got to change this up. Woo. Watch out. Hey, now. Kyle can stay on a ball and drive it all the way to left. He can sit back on a breaking ball and hit it out to right center. And he can also just hit the hell out of the ball right back up the middle. That's just how talented he is. And he was feeling confident. You know, there's one thing if I take away from uh, Joe Torre made this comment a long time ago. And it was, re it was when I listened to uh, Derek Jeter was saying this quote, and it really stuck with me. You can't always look at the stats and the analytics because you can't always measure a heartbeat. And that what it was really trying to say is you can't measure what someone's going through. And if they're sped up, mentally things are wrong, you don't know what can happen. Okay? So this was Kyle Stowers. The one thing Kyle does do, his, he does strike out a little bit. That's a part of his game. Okay? So if you're looking at it, I'm trying to go where I was before. All the way on this side, I'll get out of the picture frame. 104, that's his strikeouts. So he had 104 strikeouts, 95 games. In the big leagues, 29 strikeouts, 34. And then if I looked at it correctly, 76 and 68 in Norfolk last year. But the guy can drive the baseball. The guy's got a lot of power. There's no doubt about that. And his OPS is, if I didn't cut them off here, high 800s, 900s, he's able to drive the baseball and do a lot of damage. And he's, he's an intriguing prospect. He really is. Here's his first hit in the big leagues, okay? And you talked about that pitch we saw early. He's fouling it off right there. It's like, damn, I just missed that. Well, he's going to shoot this ball in the gap for his first hit and first RBI as a major league hitter. 96 on the outside part of the plate. That ball is smoked, and that ball just gets going. Great start to his career for him. How about this? He's going to get a similar pitch away in the zone. You play at Fenway. You drive it to left center. And Kyle has some what I like to call just ridiculous pop. I remember he had an opposite field home run in AAA at Durham. That's the Rays AAA affiliate. An opposite field home run where it hit the third or fourth level of a uh, hotel in the back. I'm going, dude, righty-handed hitters can't even hit the ball that far. But this one, Stowers is going to drive the ball. And look where this that was. It was kind of on the outside part of the plate. I know it didn't show up on the zone. But Kyle's playing wall ball. And who doesn't love playing wall ball when you're at Fenway Park? He gets on his horse, has a triple. And then everyone's seen during spring, Kyle likes to just absolutely annihilate left-handed pitching. He's going to sit back on this slider from Strom here. It's going to hang over the middle part of the plate. And I talked about earlier about he's able to have a really good balance and stay back and drive. Hard things for lefties, lefty-lefty matchups, is for the left-handed hitter not to feel like they're going to leak off the baseball too early. Stowers does a tremendous job of being able to keep his front shoulder on hang in there long enough, and then send this one to the seats. And beautiful. Great swing. And actually, this, I think this is the bullpen. Yep, bullpen out there. Here's another example you're going to see from Stowers. Again, 2-2 two -two count. He's feeling more confident. He's feeling more relaxed. And guess what? Slider, he absolutely torches this ball. And that ball is low and down and away. And that ball's a missile off the, off the wall, ties the game up, double for Stowie. And I think this is the one that everyone remembers. Because if you're at this game in Baltimore in 2022, White Sox, Orioles, Liam Hendricks on the mound for the White Sox. And actually, the pitch before, the White Sox had a chance to win the game. They dropped the ball in foul territory. I was actually at this game. Shout out Gavin Sheets, one of my best friends, plays for the White Sox. They were in town. I wanted to go support him and support the guys. But Stowie, you give him life against one of the best pitchers in the game. He didn't back down. He gets a slider out over the plate. Pitch is going to be here and watch. We, I think if you haven't seen it, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to tell you, this ball is getting launched. And the moment in the stadium, talk about Orioles magic. That was an Orioles magic moment. And look how excited Stowie is. 
it that to me gave me goosebumps because I know how hard he works. I know how great of a person he is. And for the longest time, he's had to battle and grapple with this up and down shuffling with the Baltimore Orioles. His 2022 season to me was a success, and he was trying to find the pecking order. And once you start off your season and it doesn't get off to a good start and you're playing that shuffle and then you get in your mind, you're not as confident, you're missing your pitches, you're going to have a season like Stowers did last year where you're going to be limited in your opportunities because, quite frankly, too, the guys in the big leagues were playing really well. That's not a Kyle Stowers issue. I mean, you look at it with Colton Kowser, he had a similar uh, – he had more run up there, but it was a similar situation. When you have guys like Cedric Mullins and Austin Hayes and Santander that are playing really well, it's hard to fit him in. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Kyle Stowers is going to be on the big league team this year. I don't know what's going to happen. But what I'm saying is, does he have the upside to be a very impactful player at the big league level? He does. Do I want to see him get more of a run at the big league level? Absolutely. But the context of it is, is who are you going to give at bats out to? And right now the Orioles have so many great outfielders. But if he can wait patiently and be able to have this confidence that he had like he did in that big moment, Kyle Stowers can be a really successful player in the big leagues. And you got to just keep persevering. There's a lot of players like that. But please, please do not sleep on my guy Stowey. I think when the right spot – Kyle Stowers can excel. And that's all I got for this breakdown.